Hello, Tamara Hamilton here. I am excited to come on here and talk about how to monetize Pinterest, right? And how to build your email list. Because people are sleeping on Pinterest. Why are y'all sleeping on Pinterest? Pinterest is a gold mine. Pinterest is pure gold. It's untapped. There are so many reasons you should be on Pinterest and I was on another creator's TikTok live last night and her and I got to chatting a little bit about it and she was saying the same thing that she's sleeping on Pinterest because one of the big questions that's coming up is where are people going to go if TikTok is actually banned right where are people going to go like for their recipes and to learn how to cook and just like TikTok is really focused on search Pinterest has been the third largest search engine for many, many years now. <laughs> for as long as I've been on Pinterest, it's been a search engine. And that is why I um, really went in on Pinterest years ago. Okay, I went in on Pinterest years ago. So my Pinterest story goes like this. I started a business in April of 2013. And by June, I had created a blog. And also at the same time, during all that time, those months, I had gotten on Pinterest and I really liked Pinterest, right? I liked being able to save quotes. Um, back then it was a lot of quotes for me, a lot of fashion, inspiration. Those were some of my first viral pins were quotes and, and um, like business fashion, right? And I noticed that a lot of creators on Pinterest, what they were doing was when you clicked on their pin, it took you immediately, directly to their blog. And that's why I even started a blog in the first place was because I saw how people were getting free traffic to their blog from Pinterest. And mind you, this was when I came to, you know, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram with over 20 years of sales, marketing and leadership experience, but I had to learn digital marketing so i while i didn't quite really know the term web traffic i knew as early as 2013 that people were getting visitors targeted visitors because of my foundation in marketing which goes back several decades i knew that people were getting traffic that they were taking people from pinterest to their blogs. So if you don't know what web traffic is, that's what it is. It's when you move people from one place online to another. Think about it if you own a McDonald's, right? You want to own a McDonald's in a great real estate location that has a lot of traffic around it. One of my best and favorite analogies is several years ago before Starbucks actually would place stores inside of Target, you often would find in the same location, in the same retail space, TJ Maxx, Tar Target, Starbucks, and Kohl's department stores. Don't believe me, go to any suburb around you and you will typically see those stores tend to be around each other because they have similar customers. Their customer tends to shop at all of them, right? And so a way to ethically steal traffic from another high traffic location is to be in proximity, right? And so you can do that with Pinterest by getting people who are on Pinterest looking for the type of content that you create. They click on your pin, be it video, a lot of people didn't know this last night, be it video or a static pin, and you can drive traffic to your landing page, to your blog, to your e-commerce website, to your um, your offer, to your affiliate links, to your LTK, to your Amazon links. I did very well over the holidays with Amazon affiliate links because of Pinterest, right? And because of video pins on Pinterest. So I figured that out early on and that's why I started a blog in 2013, my first blog. Plus, I'd heard from other people who really knew the internet marketing piece, you know, that I, that I would want a blog and that I would want landing pages. And so I, I went out and I started creating this stuff and I created it all wrong at first, but I finally figured that out and fi fixed that by 2014. But so that summer I began to notice 
when I was looking for certain things online, my pins were coming up in the Google search. So not only was Pinterest driving traffic to my websites, to my blogs, to my offers, to my affiliate links in 2013, before video was really anywhere but YouTube, this is what was happening because of me having an account and creating pins on Pinterest, right? And this was before Pinterest even had a business account. It was just, you got a, you had a Pinterest account. In fact, when I first got on Pinterest, you had to uh, get on a waiting list. I was on a waiting list for a whole week. Like, when are they gonna let me in? When are they gonna let me in? And then I finally got in and I was a pinner and I went crazy creating pins, right? Because I find that most people either are on Pinterest and they're pinning and paying attention to everyone else's pins, but they're not creating their own pins. They're not creating pins that drive that traffic back to their blog, to their website, and giving them that search engine strength, okay? Because when you search, especially in Google Images, a lot of what you will see will go back to pins, okay? Like I noticed in that summer of 2013 that I was getting Google search engine strength not only in images, but on, you know, the all tab of Google engine, so Google search with my pins. So then I really went crazy for the next few months with pins. So back to what I was saying, people, a lot of people realize, don't realize that they cannot just only pin what other people have already put on Pinterest, but that they should also be creating their own pins. Okay. There's a lot of magic in creating your own pins. There are people who have Pinterest accounts and they kind of forgot about them and they don't even know their login anymore. And that's because they didn't get it because they didn't get the benefits of it because they did not create uh, their own pins. So let me pull up something really quickly so I can stay on track. But I wanted to talk about optimizing and monetizing your Pinterest. And if you're gonna monetize your Pinterest, the first thing you need to do is actually get the business account, either switch to a business account or create an entirely new business account, okay? And they really kind of only want you to have one, but if your account is old and you can't get in, just create a new one, right? You want a business account, okay? I'm always going to suggest, with the exception of this app, TikTok, that you go with a business account as much as possible. There's a reason why I just switched from my business account on TikTok to this to uh, a personal, and that's because of the um, the way they've expanded their rewards. So if you're not following me, make sure you hit that plus sign because I don't only I don't only talk about monetizing Pinterest. I talk about just monetization overall. But Pinterest has always been a core of my monetization strategy because of what we're going to talk about now. But the first step is you've got to switch to a business account, okay? So let me just find, I actually have a TikTok video where I go through the five things that I did to grow my account to over 12,000 followers. And at its peak, I was getting 3 million monthly views on Pinterest, okay? So let me just get it over here. Okay, so you wanna switch to a business account. Like I said, we covered that. The reason you wanna switch to a business account is because number one, you're gonna get the analytics. And this is why I would always recommend that you switch to a business account or a some sort of creator account that's gonna give you insights, okay? And it's gonna give you different tools then you would be able to get otherwise, right? Because you're in business, right? And so this whole concept of, if you go to a business account, you're not gonna get exposure, you're not gonna get this or that. No, that doesn't make any sense, right? That that just doesn't make any sense. Let me go and do, that just doesn't make any sense. Let me go and do not disturb. Notifications pop off, it gets annoying, okay? So you want insights, you want an analytics, right? You don't have a business if you don't have data, I'm sorry. In 2024, you do not have an online business if you don't have data, if you don't have insights, if you don't have analytics, because baby data is king. So if you don't know for a fact 
the numbers telling you, you know, like, okay, so here's an example from Pinterest. If I never switched to a business account, I would not have known this. And this has helped me make multiple six figures, okay? Something that my Pinterest analytics taught me. Because when I started that account back in 2013, I was marketing a third party beauty, skincare, and nutritional products, right? And so I was creating pins around that. But because I was also being authentically who I am as a person, which is my brand, I also was posting things about finance and business. And here's what my Pinterest analytics taught me. They taught me that my beauty customer, my beauty ideal client, on Pinterest and all over the internet was also interested in their number one thing they had an affinity for outside an affinity. I want to make sure I'm saying that and enunciate it. An affinity, meaning they also had a strong interest in, they also had a strong pull toward content that it was related to what I just told you, finance and business and personal growth and development. But number one, was finance and typically when i say that to people their mind is blown that these women who are online looking for beauty and makeup and skincare tutorials also have a high propensity to consume content in the area of finance okay and when you know my story and you know that i really was not only marketing to women who liked beauty and makeup tutorials but women who owned salons, women who owned their own beauty and makeup brands, no matter how big or small, that makes absolute sense, right? When you know that, for example, in the black community, that being a salon owner creates wealth for black women and consequently a lot of black single mothers, a, a lot of them who generate over six figures a year own some sort of salon they do hair they do makeup to use the vernacular i really am not fond of those terms but you get what i am saying right so the, i would never have known that i could have had a hunch i could have suspected it and the only ways i could have validated that was one by talking to my ideal client and you know but knowing who actually bought for me still is not always a good indicator of everyone that i am attracting to me by way of my content, right? And the only other way was by having that data and that analytics. And the third way would be to run ads to people who had those interests as well, okay? So you want data, you want analytics. The biggest companies that are out there got to be the biggest companies that are out there because at some point they decided to scale up and scaling up is a numbers game. You cannot scale up without having the data behind you. How do you know you're truly growing if you're only looking at likes, comments, and followers? That, that You can't take that to the bank, right? You have to have specific information and you get that data by optimizing your account first as a business account and that's gonna give you tools like the ability to claim your domain. Claiming your domain on Pinterest is a big deal because that's going to mean, number one, you're going to get data and insights for the traffic that you're driving over to Pinterest. Remember, I said that's one of the great things about uh, Pinterest is that web traffic, right? So you get the data from that by claiming your website and anyone who goes to your website and pins from your website you get the data and attribution for that as well, okay? You all, And when I say attribution, that means they cannot go in and change that link. You That link is that they pin is forever tied to your website and you get the data on that. You That's in your back office, not theirs on Pinterest. That's, again, we got to think like business people. And one thing that's going to separate me from most others is everything that I do, I'm going to, I hate to use the word justify, but I'm definitely going to explain. Sometimes I probably over explain, baby. But I'm going to explain to you my thought process, 
not to indoctrinate you into my thought process, but to teach you how I think so that you can develop your own way of thinking. Again, not to indoctrinate you and say, this is the only way to think about it. This is the only way to proceed it or view it, but for you to understand my thought process. So in order for you to develop your own thought process that works for you and your business. So that is number one. You want to be a business account, okay? That also allows you to put tracking on your website. Now, I know we're moving to a cookie-less world, but um, if you are in e-commerce, for example, that's gonna give you the ability to link your shop up right to Pinterest, so people don't even have to leave Pinterest. In your, up, your inventory updates on Pinterest and all these other cool things that you would not get if you were not an actual business account on Pinterest. So in, in summary, switching to a business account is not always a bad thing. I would rather have the data and reach fewer of the right, most targeted people than to constantly be swimming in a sea of what ifs and, and, and I thinks and shoulda, woulda, coulda, and, and rather have that hardcore data because the biggest companies, the biggest, baddest, most companies, in your world, in your niche, in your industry, they have the data behind them, okay? So that's step one of how I was able to monetize and massively grow. A Pinterest presence was by switching to a business account and I did that back when they first created them, um, allowed that as an option. I would say number two would be to optimize your profile, okay? And so much like YouTube, much like TikTok, and just like Google, you need to do your keyword research and make sure your keywords are strategically placed in your profile, in your pins, in your boards, in order to be, as my girl Sab says, findable. You want to be findable. You want people to be able to find you because what you're seeking is seeking you. I'm gonna say it again. What you seek is seeking you. You want your ideal client to be able to find you, and that is where doing the keyword research and Pinterest provides you tools, and I'm not sure that these tools are available if you don't have a business account. They have a trends tool, and they also have some creator tools that you can get access to that are going to help you make better informed business decisions. Remember, we have to think like business people. We have to put our business caps on. And a lot of this is, is being two and three steps ahead, okay? And you need tools, you need data to be able to do that. You need to make informed decisions. And so knowing your keywords and getting those keywords where they need to be at all times is key to your success on Pinterest because I didn't get into this, but Pinterest is a visual search engine, okay? And as a visual search engine, people are there with intent, right? They have a lot of intent, right? There's various levels of intent. There's the person who's aware, there's the person who is in consideration, that, you know, there's four or five different areas of intent, and Pinterest is full funnel and it's all there. So just because, you know, a person may be on Pinterest and they're looking for, you know, tips on real estate marketing, which is trending right now, it has been for some time, real estate marketing, doesn't mean, again, that they're not also there and interested in consuming content on glowing skin after 50, right? And so you can be a part of the conversation by being rounded, having your content pillars and having those keywords in your boards and really knowing who it is that you serve. Anytime I talk about marketing, one thing about me that you can guarantee that you can count on is baby, all roads lead back to your ideal client because if they don't, it's a hot mess, okay? All roles are always going to lead back to your ideal client with Tamara S. Hamilton, okay? Because I have over 30 years of sales, marketing, and leadership experience, and being customer-centric, customer-focused has not once 
taken me down the wrong path okay so your keywords you need to know what your keywords are and the great thing is with pinterest being the third largest search engine okay pinterest is uniquely positioned to help you rank faster and higher and you don't have to um, go as deep with your keywords okay and we go into this ad nauseum no nah, i'm just kidding but we do go into this and at, at length in my pin profits mastery course okay and uh you can actually get a free training from me the secret to winning at pinterest when you are short on time by texting secret to 414-404-6040 or dming me or if you're watching this somewhere where you can comment comment and i'll be able to see it after the live ends because on TikTok i can't um or instagram i can't i won't be able to you'll have to dm me on those platforms the word secret and i will send you the information to get access to that free training which comes with a free workbook and it reveals my um one of my key pinterest monetization strategies which is going to be helpful for a lot of you if you already have content and that is taking the content that you already have resharing and redistributing it and so that workbook walks you through that process okay so you want to optimize your profile you want to optimize your boards you want to optimize your pins and that is being heavy on the keywords and using the pinterest trends tool and the pinterest search bar okay and i walk you through that in the course the other thing that I did, because I was on Pinterest for several years, I grew really quickly, and then I stayed at about a thousand because my pins were working and I didn't create a lot of new pins for quite a while. And then in 2018, 2019, whatever was going on with Facebook, it wasn't given to Tamira what Tamira needed. So what did Tamira do? Tamira went to Pinterest with renewed focus. And at that time, they had these idea pins, which were really to be geared more toward like being stories on Instagram or Snapchat, right? I don't even know if Facebook, my Facebook did have them by then. And so I started creating these idea or if they, I originally, I was a beta for the pin, Pinterest stories, right? They were called stories and then they started calling them idea pins because they kind of took stories and kind of took it somewhere else, right? And now everything is just a video pin. It's either a video pin or a static pin. But I will tell you, static pins will do great. <coughs> and you want to post both but I will tell you that your video pins will lead you to more growth they will get you in front of new eyeballs faster than anything and that's true of all platforms right so that's the key I've already given you the key that's why you want that training and you want to go into the DM and text me at 414-404-6040 the word secret so that I can send you that training because you already have the content. You just need to tweak the content. You need to tweak the content. You don't want to use logos, for example, and get that content on Pinterest and get it optimized as not only your backup, but why should you only be monetizing one platform when there are all these other platforms out there? That is such a risky place. Now that they're talking about banning and actually moving to for sale pit, uh, TikTok or ban it, you definitely want to be on Pinterest, right? Same with Facebook a couple weeks ago when it had an outage and we all woke up and got logged out and thought we'd been act, right? You need more than one platform, okay? So video pins are going to be a huge piece of your strategy because those are going to get you in front of more people. And in Pin Profits Mastery, I actually break down the types of content and I align them with what your objective would be and along with that ascension process, that customer buyer's journey, okay? The other thing I would do is and this definitely applies if you have a blog. If you don't have a blog, I think a blog should be a cornerstone, again, of your content strategy in 2024, right? I think we've learned in recent years that not having a blog, not having our own website 
is the same as being tied to only one platform. You need your blog because number one, you need the data and you need your own piece of real estate that you own for your community to be able to find you and get information from you. That is so huge, okay? And so setting up that RSS feed to auto post from your blog to Pinterest is huge and that can be your static pins. And we go through that in Pin Profits Mastery. So if you have not gotten that free training, text SECRET to 414-404-6040 or DM me. And then the last thing is you gotta post regularly and consistently, right? Um, and that is going to include having some sort of Pinterest strategy. What is your strategy? Because a lot of y'all are out here posting and praying. You're just, whether it's TikTok or whatever, you don't really have a strategy because what you're doing is you're, ch you're chasing trends. And yes, I told you for your keyword research to um, uh, use Pinterest trends, but you're going to use them as part of your research to develop your strategy. Otra vez. You're going to use the trends. You're going to use the keywords. You're going to use the research to develop and then execute and implement your Pinterest strategy. Because folks, in 2024, we cannot still be out here just posting, spraying, and praying, and chasing trends. That's why Saab was talking about last night, you know, there was someone on her live and someone who I think has booked a strategy session with her who has 74,000 followers on TikTok. That's great. That's many more than what I have. But I've made more money from TikTok, Pinterest, Instagram, and Facebook than this person has because I know how to monetize because I have a monetization and a content strategy. My content strategy is part of my overall monetization strategy because I understand the role that content plays in monetization. And then I have a very specific content strategy regardless of what platform that I am on. There are basics and foundations to my content strategy and that includes generating leads, not just followers. That includes having my pillars that I create content around so that I am targeting who is following me, so that I'm targeting who is engaging with me to convert them into paying customers. No, you won't convert all of them. You will convert a percentage of them. But that is also why video is huge, a part of your strategy on Pinterest, so that you can get in front of more people and stack the odds that more of your ideal client are following you and you have that much more greater chance of converting them and then you can scale up by converting more of them because you have the data. I love when it all just comes full circle. I love when it comes 360. I love when I show you that I make sense and I actually know what I'm talking about because it not only works for me, it works for clients, right? I have people across a lot of industries, but of course people in beauty, skincare, health and wellness tend to gravitate toward me because of my content and my experience and my background. And I have helped them convert customers from Pinterest, from Facebook, from Facebook groups, from their email, right? And we didn't even get into that. Another reason you want Pinterest is to grow your email list, is to collect qualified and targeted leads. And if you have 74,000 followers, but you don't have an email list, if you don't have a niche, if you don't have content pillars, if you don't have a message, if you don't have branding, that is why you're gonna struggle to convert because you're getting a lot of people who follow you because they like your funny and entertaining videos, but maybe you're not educating, right? And it goes both ways. Sometimes I need to be more entertaining. I'm heavy on the education. <laughs> That's my comfort zone. That's my wheelhouse. That's where I shine. But I do know how to make people fall in know, like, and trust with me in my own entertaining way. Okay, so those are the five things. You want a business account. You want to optimize your profile. You want to set up an RSS feed for your blog. 
you want to use videos, not just static pins and create your own pins and you want to create and post your own pins regularly and consistently. And that is just the basic foundation of a solid Pinterest monetization strategy. If you need help creating your Pinterest monetization strategy, you definitely want to first make sure you're following me. And then you also want to reach out to me and schedule a consult as well as get my free training, The Secret to Winning at Pinterest when you are short on time by texting SECRET to 414-404-6040. You can drop it in the comments. You can DM it to me and I will send you that training. That training was created with three people in mind. The person who's on Pinterest and is only repinning other people's stuff, saving other people's pins. They're not creating their own pins. They're not pinning about their offers, their business. They're not driving traffic to their website. They're driving traffic and data to someone else's website, okay? Number two is the person who, they've been on Pinterest. They, don't, they haven't touched it in quite some time, sometimes so long in fact, that they haven't even, they can't even remember their password, right? And then there are people who've never been on Pinterest. And my training and courses are definitely for all three, right? The other thing, the other way that I can work with you is a one-on-one -on -one strategy session, okay? And so you just DM or text strategy to 414-404-6040 and uh, we will get that booked, okay? Because I switched from business to personal, so I don't have the link in my bio. So, but you can text me, you can DM me, and I will be more than happy. So, if anyone's here with any questions, now is the time to ask them. Ask away, ask away, and I'll get those questions answered for you. Um, someone last night, their mind was blown when I told them that they could post video, and if they had TikToks, the first thing they need to do is get those TikToks on Pinterest and get them optimized, but you do not want the TikTok logo on there. You don't want to use any platform's logo on any other platform, okay? That's just standard. But Pinterest has a great video tool. They have a great creation tool that they are working on and improving, okay? I love the, I mean, the, the, the sharpness of even the front-facing camera on Pinterest is really good, right? You have to understand that people are on Pinterest as part of their planning and their research, right? So Coachella is coming up. You'll hear about Coachella from most other people after they've already gone or they're already there. But the pinner it has already been on Pinterest and they're already researching hair and makeup. They're looking for festival, hint. They're looking for festival makeup right they're looking for festival fashion they're looking for festival hairstyles for 2024 right and so that's the great thing about pinterest and that's why i love pinterest because i'm a time-tested marketer and i come from the days of you have a whole you have your marketing campaigns pretty much mapped out for the entire year and consumers they already know right consumers already know People are at, out at the stores right now doing what? They're buying Easter dresses. They're buying Easter baskets. They're buying things for Easter baskets, right? Because they've been conditioned for years to do that. And so that's what I love about Pinterest is it gets you into that. I have a, a older training called Marketing 101 where I teach my... Now, it doesn't mean these are the only marketing campaigns that I do, but I teach my marketing campaign for the year and it let it be an example and template for you to do the same. It doesn't mean that you won't do any other marketing campaigns that you see fit throughout the year or a little more spontaneously or a little more short term and closer to the date. But once you work through my marketing one-on-one -on -one framework, you have a year's worth of content at any given time and then so for example for years i've done a spring makeup class right i kick off labor day i kick off labor day weekend and memorial day weekend with either a makeup or a skincare class right 
And if you follow my strategy, what will happen is the next year you already have a good chunk of that content. So you will be updating it, right? And you may be replacing a portion of it. But if you go with the, the strategy that I teach, a lot of that content will already be created and you won't have to create it. You'll just be resharing it and maybe updating your captions, for example. But the videos will already be there, right? Everything I do is strategic. A lot of people out here calling themselves marketing strategists and they're not. I am a true marketing strategist. Everything is deliberate, but not in an evil, sinister way. It's just thought out, right? It is thought out, it is planned, it is executed. And yes, spontaneous things still happen, trust me. That's why my blood pressure sometimes gets high, okay? Um, but yeah, it's very deliberate and intentional because that's how business is. That's how business moves, especially once it hits scale. Um, it, but it, there's also the other side too. I will never lie to you and tell you that it, there's not. So uh, it is time for me to go. I will chat with you later. Bye.